is everybody going to join this particular meeting or they are going to be present on the lobby how is it sir you have to present on the lobby i was referring if everybody is going to join this meeting like in the lab okay sir like this no sir not everyone in joining we have projector and we are projecting this meeting in the oh, projector okay. Got yes, it. sir. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So let me know if you should start. Yes, sir. You can start. Okay. Okay. Moment. Moment. Let me share. Let me know once it is visible. Yes, sir. Visible. Okay. Thank you. So, um, hello, everybody. Is everybody ready? Hello. I I still see everybody is still settling up. Yeah, some students are coming. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Um. So, has anybody ever tried some kind of agricultural AI or contributed in agriculture in their past? All right. So, everybody. Could you please give me a thumbs up? ये तार्त आपको बोलने की जरूरत है यहाँ आप मत बोलो अभी let them do it आप माँ भारत के संदेह हो जाओगे फिर hand raise मत करो hand raise तभी करना है क्वेश्चन देगा तो Thumbs up there. Okay. So now let's move ahead with this and let's learn what exactly are we going to do here? Because in, while we are working on agriculture, because this whole conference is about agriculture, I like to keep theme and the theme of AI on agriculture. Now let's first understand what exactly we are going to learn. Then. We'll get some historical background, like how exactly agriculture started and how it was getting transformed by day by day and every decade. So, how exactly this evolution happened, we'll learn, and then it will go through with the emerging technologies, which are currently being used in agriculture, and we'll understand what is AI, because currently we have LLM Gen AI. And everything which is present, right? So we we'll have to learn about AI first, and then we can build something. So while building it, we come across a word, a terminology that is RAG. What exactly that is? How does it help me to get some information? Because there is this word which is generation, and there is another word which is retrieval. So how does they link to each other, and how it can help us? After understanding all those things, we will. deep dive into coding and once we have that model built we'll run it and if you have any questions you can definitely ask the chat section is always open and you can ask it now i'll hand it over to gargi she will give us few more information so gargi it's all yours yeah hello and good afternoon everyone i welcome you all to the next gen farming meetup on the topic that is the future of farming ai powered agricultural innovations so before we start let us dive into what am i what is the domain that i work on and what is my educational background or whatever that i have been doing all those past years then we'll dive into the historical aspects so yeah i am a post graduate history scholar and very soon i'll be adding doctor to my name as well because i'll be heading to phd as well So yeah, apart from that, uh, I am also a published author. I have written many articles on women development and on the art and culture of India as well, with regard to various regional paintings such as Patta Chitra painting or the Madhubani paintings of Bihar. So yeah, those are my uh, research or educational activities. But apart from that, my co-curriculars have been with regard to being a youth speaker. uh during my university days and apart from that i have been a sustainable development goal advocate 
for the goal number 12, that is uh, responsible consumption and production, and goal number 13, which is climate change. So in the upcoming part, I'll also be talking about how climate change is affecting our food production and farming. Now, you all know we are somehow connected to IEEE, and that's why we are here on the platform talking today. So yeah, I have been an IEEE speed mentor, and I have mentored student at, students at uh, uh, VIT Mumbai, where the theme was upskilling uh, uh, undergrads on what are the challenges that uh, they face. And yeah, my hobbies also include being a professional baker, which I have been doing during my COVID time. Yeah, I was in my graduation years and I had my own uh, little startup, a home bakery. And then after I have also done my PG diploma in fine arts, so I'm an artist as well. And my sports are basically into badminton. So these are all the basic background that we have. But yeah, now moving towards the introduction part of our main topic, which is that what are we? When we talk about the food production and food farming, the basic thing that we need to understand today is that the food and farming is the heart of our cultiv of our survival and well-being. And from the humble grains that we have been eating, that the humble grains that they nourish us, and the vegetables that fill our plates, that food is not just a basic need. It is also a foundation of the culture and the economy that we live in. And farming being the backbone of our society, it helps in the food production, provides us with various resources that feed the entire livelihood and population, and also helps in maintaining biodiversity. So today, when we are together on this platform, we have some points to discuss that is with growing climate change with growing global challenges that we face today there is a critical time that we need innovation in technologies that help in food production as well so agriculture being one of them and the historical evolution that we have seen from traditional methods that have driven the agriculture till now now we are talking about AI in agriculture. So there are various tools that we are going to see further, uh, which have evolved the whole historical uh, geography of agriculture. So basic points being the rag or which the guest speaker will be talking about. So moving ahead, we have a brief intro, a brief, uh, a brief background of what has been the history with regard to agriculture. So moving ahead, we have, uh, being a historical buff, I'll definitely talk about some of the phases of history that has been the Neolithic period where we have seen the domestication of plants uh, and animals, which have helped in the transition from a nomadic hunting period to being a gathered or settled uh, farming societies. From there, we have developed till now. Now, when we look at the ancient civilizations, being the Egypt or the Mesopotamian civilization, we have seen that how the agricultural uh, systems, for example, the irrigation has improved at that time and have uh, and various tools as well. For example, the plog or the irrigation system mm -hmm. uh, have enhanced the crop yields in the arid environment. So not only are ancient people were well developed in growing the crops, they were also well developed in knowing how and in what weather conditions the particular crops can be grown. Now, coming to the Middle Ages of the Europe, we have seen that an agricultural revolution has taken place in the 18th or 19th century, where we have seen various innovations from steam engine to seed drills, uh, which have helped in selective breeding of crops and in also in enhancing the livestock as well. And then after, then after we can see how the mechanization of agriculture began, especially with uh, various mechanized farm tools, for example, threshing machine and grain processing machine. So moving ahead, 
we have some of the evolution that has happened over the time. Now you guys won't be bored with the historical background as we are talking about going to talk about more of evolution and how tech has involved. So basically earlier we have seen how the traditional tools uh, have been used. For example, we have seen in our villages or in the uh, past that how wooden plugs were used, spade and uh, bullock carts were used uh, in the fields. But then came the green revolution wherein uh, the farmers were made more aware to use how to use the pesticides, how to use the fertilizers, and how to develop their irrigation technologies. And apart from that, moving ahead, we had mechanizations where we see various use of uh, and implementation of automized machines, for example, uh, tractors or any modern harvesting equipment that we see now has been an evolution since that time. Now, moving ahead, we see that when we talk about agrotech, then what it is, it is basically a broad term that encapsulates the use of information technology, especially in this uh, uh, space of agriculture. And now when we talk about the irrigation advantages, or advances that we have face, faced or, or developed over time, then there are various sprinkler systems or drip system of irrigation, which have reduced the use of water, but increased the efficacy of using water in the fields. And that has been developed only because of the technology that we have, uh, uh, if, that has evolved over time. Now talking about the digital era, we have GIS, we have weather forecasting systems, we have mobile apps for uh, farming, especially uh, when I'm talking, uh, when we are talking about the mobile apps, how they help is that when a farmer has access to these apps, they are able to monitor their field very well. They are able to see the operations part. They are also able to see the irrigation part. And also they are able to maintain the greenhouse temperatures. So yeah, digital era has definitely given a boost and edge to the farmers. And now moving way ahead in the 21st century, we have seen how smart tech has also involved. That is artificial intelligence, internet of things, drones, especially drones for the matter of fact, we have, we are seeing now not in uh, only the marriage halls or the marriage lavish parties, we see drones, they are uh, they are helping us not in the military sector as well. They are helping us in agriculture as well. For example, they can have a bird's eye perspective of the whole farmland. They can help in the advanced imaging technologies, which would ultimately help in targeted actions of the pesticides that are used or the fertilizers that are being used. Or for example, in a crop field, if a particular part of the crop has been destroyed due to weeds or something, they can be checked out using the drone technology. So yeah, then after comes the precision ag agriculture, which is again a part of smart tech. And now in future technologies, we have the use of blockchain. We have the use of gene editing that how the crops are mutated for their best yield. And then after we have climate resilient crops as well, because when we see uh, 20 years ago, if we were living in a particular area, the temperature was varying dif very differently. And now, because of global warming, because of all the um, hazardous uh, climate change that has happened, climate resilient crops are the future. And to build climate resilient crops, we need to have that kind of technology, that kind of AI and all the uh, technology that we need uh, in order to go ahead. Now, moving ahead today, as agrotech ventures have no doubt, no doubt pushed the boundaries uh, of what is possible in the agriculture sector, they have also made the automated systems very accessible. And uh, going into the nitty gritties of this, I think the next speaker who is the guest as well, Mr. Dishant Gandhi would be, uh, would be and is very qualified enough to speak on the details of it. 
So I'll rather now hand over to him. So, um, uh, Mr. Dishan, please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gargi, for giving us a brief about history and about history of tech back in the time. So, किसको किसको बोर हुआ है कौन कौन से हो गया ये बता सो हो एम आई तो बेसिकली आई वर्क कम्प्लीटली इन ए आई एम एल दो में एंड येस वी डू हैव नाइट वर्क वी हैव नाइट जॉब सो जब सब सो रहे रहते हैं हम यहाँ पे काम कर रहे हैं देन एज आई गेट सम फ्री टाइम इन माई लाइफ आई स्टार्टेड माई एम सी ए in ai so that i can get a degree and i can do some extra curricular work because student discount sabko chahiye rehta hai so actually apart from that i also do open source contribution so back in october this year you you might have heard about hacktober fest try try to do open source contribution it will help you to get a job and also to get some pay in market and then as i am here being i triple e member as a young professional i i literally love to mentor and uh, to speak about things and which i know about i usually don't speak about things about which i don't know about so might have heard me about talking about chatbots ai nlp and those things and i i am passionate about building ai solutions i usually work on building rag or gen ai applications as of now because back in the back in 2020 when i started that time gpt 1 was there it was not that capable how much it is now so you might have heard about it back in 2020 when it started booming but i have worked with it in 2020 when it, when it was just a normal language model which was been used to develop chatbots and used for classification and generation so let's get her get her what exactly are we going to look at it so um right now you you can see a lot of things here so um uh, when we talk about agrotech there are a lot of stuff it comes into our mind which is farming technologies or using robots for for the, uh, for farming or uh, harvesting yeah, i guess so and then there are sustainable solutions so what exactly they contain in it first is in farming technologies uh, gargi mentioned about drones iot applications so you might have built some kind of iot applications you, you might have heard about soil detection like soil temperature detection or if soil uh, has water or not detect that also apart from that there are also different kind of conditions which which you can use uh, there are the sensors which you can use specifically for this task and as we get the data what do we do with it we go ahead with this data driven decisions how exactly we work on it is it depends on organization to organization like how you want to use the data at the end so correct so it's it's part of this it's part of this particular process so once you have the data you may try to automate it or use a robotics to add some kind of preventions or to improve your solutions how do you do that we'll learn about automation part in this particular in this particular workshop okay then will be obviously we are going to use a sustainable solutions in there so how exactly a sustainable solution comes in our mind usually you have to think beyond time space complexity in this particular section where you, you have to have eco friendly solution which does not use too much of machines or too much of uh, data which is present here so by far we understood what exactly are we looking at the evolution emerging techs and all these things but currently what we are going to do is ai 
so you you'll have to get some basics out of it what exactly ai is and how it can help us and what exactly is generative ai is, to be specific now uh like term ai usually comes around a large domain because it has so many subsections which is infinite right now back in the day it was not that infinite you, you, it was finite now if if i explain ai it becomes a too brief uh, or like too short term for for us where it consists of decision making it it can also do human intelligence it can mimic us at some point not specifically to everything then apart from that it is also able to learn by giving it a data it can learn it can also learn by browsing internet which is way vaster than our knowledge apart from that it can also understand patterns which we usually as a human are able to understand it so apart from that what exactly gen ai is we know about ai but we don't know about gen ai so how can it help us in agriculture usually what happens is gen ai has different kind of large language models and we are familiar with very few that is gpt gemi gemini and much more so ah yes there is one more which is llama i'll i'll show you bunch of models and we'll work on them depending on how much your machine is capable so before we start i would like before i move ahead with this gen ai section i would like you all to download olama which is right here this particular application meanwhile it gets downloaded and installed uh, i would like you to focus on my ppt which is right now a bit of theory i hope you don't get bored because i won't be boring you in this download this on your windows machine and if you if you haven't downloaded it once you have downloaded it we have few commands which you have to run once you have installed olama run and olama pull so first we'll do this command and then once you have run that amara amara you can do okay just do this even if you if you run the second command it will directly pull it and start running it so that's fine if you want to do different commands and if you, if you want to do just the second command it works okay give me a thumbs up guys are you there there 20 thumbs up so only the olama link is uh, the slide is visible from not the command which you wrote no i said the command in the chat in the meeting chat so that they can copy paste directly okay sir so, yeah you don't have to write the whole thing just copy paste it we'll be doing a lot of copy paste by the way in this section so be ready not coding okay so let's get back here um uh, guys do give me a thumbs up or update me on the chat if the installation is done so i can i could know okay because we'll be building some interesting stuff today and i promise you'll like it you can have your final year projects ready or at least industry level projects ready by what we are going to build so let's get back to generative ai and how it can help us there are three examples which i have added here which is first is like crop image generation which can help us to understand what exactly fresh damage has been done to the crop such as let's say a particular model uh let me take an example as gpt4 gpt4 is trained on to their vision model i'm not talking about the text generation but the vision model is trained on let's say hundreds and hundreds of images of crops where they have classified it into different section first is a good crop second is a bad crop just two classification binary ones we are not going to into too much classification right now so if you upload a photo of your crop will it be able to detect 
at least at some level that the crop is good or bad in terms of their pest damage will it be able to do that guys i think yes it would be able to yeah okay i need this kind of responses again okay i'll be coming up with way more questions apart from that we have generating weather reports and forecaster and then how we can merge them together is using conversational ai like directly using a conversational ai people can or farmers can upload their images or ask anything they want so in today's session we are going to build something similar to it okay then there are real world applications too where ai powered apps are detect are able to detect disease of a particular plant it has not been used in commercially it can be used commercially if you have any kind of business idea you can definitely commercialize it where a government of course will support you on that because agriculture is a backbone of india so make sure to think about it and you can also have a project ready you might have participated in smart india hackathon there you might have won if you could have got something like this apart from that there are different kind of analysis to manage irrigation and fertilizer uses where the farmer gets suggestions on the on those parts i i have one one of my contacts who has developed an application a chatbot application in villages where farmers or any particular person who wants to attend to a doctor they just have to fill a form on the tablet which a particular person has or that particular person is a staff of that particular hospital okay they have to just fill it out that's it they can go inside talk with the doctor and they can get the medicines quickly the data has been recorded in here and that data is going into the government database where they are going giving sub subsidies to them for checkups health checkups similarly you can do this things for farmers in agriculture so it's quite an easy and uh, you can get an internship in government organizations now let's let's get moving ahead what exactly are we having transformers for you might have heard about transformers not exactly the movie which recently came but we are talking about much more than that what exactly that is like why why it has been used so nlp natural language processing is used in multiple ways previously there was not text generation but there were translation now we have text generation also translation also and question answering apart from that it can also detect entities how can it detect entities if you see right here in this section this particular image specifies a lot of this thing so now if you have a look at the attention model you can see this this particular lines which are going into the left hand side boxes it shows that it as a word is connected with so many letters or words characters these are embeddings actually and each and everything is connected with each other to check how it can understand it is a matching algorithm and it checks how much attention is grabbing and how near it is so let's get back and understand what are the key features about it what is i i won't be teaching too depth into nlp or transformers but i would really appreciate if you could have a look at it more in depth because it will not only help you to get internships also it will help you to build a good good models to be honest yeah what are the key features and why do we use transformers because it's parallel processing the first and foremost thing is that if you have a look at nltk library or bag of words those are low level things you have to use neural neural networks rnn and all these things in there 
So sentence transformers are one of the things which we will be using in this particular hands-on workshop. And how it can process the sentence simultaneously helps you to speed up the training. So once once you have that setup, you can your assistant can understand the context behind it because you don't want to build a FAQ chatbot which can answer one particular question at a time it should be able to answer a question which is linked to the previous question also it should look at the history behind it right just like when you you and your friend is having a conversation you do not forget the context behind it because you are not a chatbot right so that's what we are trying to build here now why exactly transformers because it out outperforms other models which are very basic in their own terms now let's come back to rag what exactly this particular thing is but there's more surprise to it we have to understand nlp before we understand rag so how exactly this topic is related to rag like why should i learn about this we are going to learn about vector embeddings has anybody ever created metrics matrices in math right uh, are you familiar with those okay uh, can you show me a particular matrix you can add it in the chat how how exactly it is can you show that to me any one of you can add an example like how exactly it is designed let's say 3 by 3 matrix mm -hmm. looking at that okay okay yeah thanks yeah this is 2d in form of 2d array correct so now let's assume it here while we are understanding about nlp so when we are looking at vector embeddings in here it becomes quite different so each and every word or each and every character has their own meanings and we want machine to understand those meanings machine does not understand words it only understands numbers so what do we do we convert them into number and assign it exactly right here so if, if you if you have a look at it now in this section i hope yeah in this section if you have a look at this particular chart it shows us how each and every word or character is is at a certain point certain numerical value has been assigned to it so here in this particular graph it is shown as from minus 0.5 to 0.6 or 0.7 in that particular range it has been assigned but that's not actually the real case it goes way beyond it uh, we can have a look at it later when we are going to do the hands-on like how exactly it is look looking in the vector space and what kind of numerical values are being assigned to it you can understand it as linked list so how does a linked list work it has been assigned a particular value at each and every point like for each and every memory part right in array see in an array these are the memory allocations and this is the value of it now if we have a look at the same thing and imagine it in the vector embedding will have the similar values how let me show it to you by drawing something just a moment Let me just stop my video. I guess I won't be able to share my screen on this until I 
Nothing really do. Okay, I hope my screen is visible. Let me try to turn on my video if it is possible. Yep, it is visible. That's great. Now, since we are looking at this section, let me bring you to our interesting area, which is whiteboard. Now, if I draw something here, which is a box, and then there is another box. It consists of let's say letter T and this letter J. Okay, this both are a particular character in the whole paragraph T J, and I want them to be converted into a vector space. How can I convert it? The machine usually goes into a different path where it creates a matrix. Just like Yathar shared with us, it gives a particular position to it. Let's say 1, 38, and then we have another section which gives us 2, 1, 1, 4, 2, 4. This is our matrix, looks like in this particular section. Now, if we have a look at this this particular point like similar words like king and queen are closing the vector space that does happen if they have the similar meaning to it you classify each and every section into a single area where let's say you guys are an audience so I'll refer to you as a equals a list Pranjal is one of them, Pajal is one of them, hope I am taking all the names right, I don't, I don't remember, <laughs> that is the book. and Yatharth is one of them, right, you guys are present, so you all will be closer to a particular cluster, which looks like marbles thrown onto a plane. Let's say you guys are from second year, third year, fourth year. This is how it will look like this box, each and every place. So the near ones you can cluster it. My PC will be lagging a bit. Please don't mind. It's also running in a little model behind it. So this will be first year, this will be second year, and this will be third year. So this is how different kinds of embedding works like it it will help you out in while working then how do they work in NLP like what exactly they do represent we did walk through all those things right now like what exactly they represent how their relationship works and all those things and why they are important exactly just because it can understand the context that's what currently matters to us when you are building a particular model, it should understand what you are talking about. Currently, when I am teaching you, teaching you guys how things are working, you should be able to understand each and every section. If you don't understand it, then there is no use of it. The same thing happens here. It, the model should understand. And it also reduces the complexity of language processes. While even if you are using sentiment analysis or a translation, whichever area you are going to use NLP, we will be using NLP a bit in, in this workshop, but you have to build something more out of it. Okay, now what exactly RAG is? What the H is RAG? We have heard everywhere right now, RAG is like potatoes, which has been sold everywhere now. 
let's understand by the Google given definition we have that is rag is retrieval with generation which create responses now in layman terms what exactly rag does I have a particular PDF a book I have read it I know that particular book it might be my Python book or a novel or an art of war whichever book I have I've read it and it's in my mind it is stored somewhere if a particular person asks me something about it I have to, what I have to do I have to retrieve that information from my mind that is usually fast for us because we we are humans and we have we have mind way better than others so you go ahead process it and give back the information same thing happens in drag so in machine terms uh, what it does is it goes into the database where exactly the particular file or data you have stored in and it fetches it and gives you an answer now we what we have to do here is we will be using that ahead in this particular workshop and for what we will be retrieving information from websites external sources such as pdf websites and databases and we'll be giving an output back to the user what are the applications we already heard about it we can use it for faq bots you can use it for market data analysis you can give them back the charts which you have okay now let's get back to the coding guys has everybody done their installations because i just got a message from the thought we have to wind up in 30 minutes or so in 20 minutes yes sir okay thank you now let's get back to the coding you might have installed llama correct if you have not do install it i won't be sharing it right now okay now let's get back here in the query rag and uh, we'll understand what exactly we have i hope it is visible my code or should i zoom in a bit so let's get started with this let me show you what exactly we are going to build we'll be building a streamlit application it will start in some time it will not only help with the agriculture chart but it will it will also give us temperature and all those things information now uh, give me a particular city for which you want to get an answer give me a city name quick quick hello charge up okay let's ask it can i so arise seed in charge up yes and a suitable time of weather It also gives us temperature. Right?
check is this is the correct weather and humidity level hello is it not audible right now it might be because when the model is running my voice may flicker or get get break in between is it proper now tell me uh, i'm sharing this chat in here check if this particular temperature and humidity level and all these things are correct or not meanwhile let's get, let's get back to the coding now what exactly i did here let's understand each and every component from scratch so first we'll understand what i have used in here first is spacey streamlet langchain and olama before before using olama i was going to use elm studio why exactly thought of moving from there to olama again so i uh, let me show it to you guys why i was having an issue you will find this particular ui in elm studio here there is discover you can find any kind of model you want in here you can chat with that directly in the chat section where you just have to load a model and start chatting you can write here see i have chatted for multiple things here like this comes for hindi to english translation or cover creating a draft cover letter to normal simple greeting i have even chat with arabic model because that was part of my job so use this for your personal use cases on a local machine do not try to extend its limit and apart from that now we have ulama currently running why exactly elm studio was not able to do it because there are still libraries which are not able to attend elm studio properly or they are not able to capacitate now first and foremost thing you have to do is load spacey model which is a smaller one which will definitely work on your machine you don't have to worry about it i know you guys are not going to run the code right now so I, i'll just go through all the things and you can do it meanwhile when when you are going back because my session is at the last and we don't have too much time where i can wait for you guys to type the code so rag is made of two things first is from template and the second is the data which we are going to use i have data currently present here that is farmer book from where exactly i have i have got it directly from the government's website our own government indian government website which has everything for basic agriculture and our model will be using this 154 pages book and i have trained this vector database for fetching this particular data now how exactly we are going to do this our whole prompt template is divided into three sections first is providing it an understanding what exactly it has to do you are a good intelligent assistant who can answer answer any questions about agriculture second you can also provide weather updates for cities not for countries right now we are using open weather api apart from that if user responds with greeting you have to answer it and you can use following context what exactly the context will have a look at it we are using conversation history and we are asking the bot to answer from our user query olama api url is this for local host this is the only url which you will be having unless and until you change the port then you can name whatever you want for the chroma database directory then we have to initialize chroma db here you can see i am using hugging face embeddings what exactly those are sentence transformers and i'll be using cuda because i have graphic cards you can use cpu you can change it to cpu make sure you have torch installed for it for cpu 
if you have your own graphic card which is a good one i have 4060 rtx so you have to make sure you have a good model for running with a good graphic card if you do not have a good graphic card then i'll i'll recommend you wait a minute um just a minute okay so let's get back here where i was uh, extract cd so what exactly we are doing here is whatever text we are getting from the user we are we are extracting geolocation that is city or country whichever we are getting from it now once we have got it we are returning it back here you can see this particular section is just for designing purpose i am using streamlit for adding a title and writing a particular text you can use this how you want you can definitely have a look at streamlit now we are first getting the vector store where we initialize our chroma where we added our directory and embedding function then once we have that we are initializing our llm which uses llama api url and we are also providing which particular model i'll be using i am currently using 3.1 because my machine can support llama 3.1 7b model there is this timeout why to add this timeout because let's say your machine got started lagging it should at least wait for 10 seconds to get it back that's the reason why now for conversation buffer memory what exactly this is this is part of lang chain and we'll be using this for keeping the history and what attributes are there so memory key is history input key is query what exactly that is if you go back to the prompt we have conversation history that which variable is history here exactly in this variable it will be able to find or add the history it should be appending in there then query is right here this particular keys can help conversation buffer to understand where exactly it is put in the prompt template now we have the prompt template right here we have to create a prompt template with input variables we added three variables in here context history and query you have to specify them right in this particular list if you have if you have just one you can add just one in here apart from that we are adding the template you can create your own template right here but I have I have already created my prompt template, so I'm using it. Make sure the namings are proper. Then we are creating a lang chain, LLM chain. How it will help you? It will definitely help you with the whole query generation and giving your proper text output. I have added a particular side options which you saw earlier in this section, which is here. You can optimize this. For creating a rag input where you can browse these files and add your own which will process not only your rag input it will re it will be a real-time assistant for you real-time agent where it fetches and get back okay now apart from that what we have here is a chat box and a chat container where our chats will be displayed so i have added is user if a user it, it, the messages of user then it will be at the right and if it is not of the user if it is of bot then it will be at the left let's go ahead with the ui and get back to the right section what exactly we are going to do here so first we are going to extract the city then we are going to get weather what exactly get, get weather does it is going to the open weather map where it is able to get the weather of that particular location how i am passing this particular city name into geolocation url where it will be giving me a geocoding which is longitude and longitude so 
once it gives me this particular codings i'll process it and give it back to the weather api saying that hey this is the location give me a weather and temperature and everything which is present for that particular location so once i get it i create a sentence out of it and send it back to our ad as a context once i have that context i do search results which is i give it to the vector store to a similarity search on it by using k as 3 what does k means the nearest area like you can get me a three outputs out of it if you want more you can increase it if you want less then you can decrease it you'll get three outputs three similarity search outputs of the input text what you have added now once you have it we start creating context out of it so i first add the weather information then i start adding the results which i found from the vector database once i have it i send it to my llm saying that hey this is the context this is the query input give me an answer that's it this is what i do and this is how it works overall now let's get back to how i populated the documents the populate db doc it extracts the data going into directed loader it has a particular folder from where it will going to be extracting the documents we have docs folder where each and every documents are present in there i have added a particular condition here which is it should only look for pdf documents you can also add more which is other documents such as txt it will be using unstructured file loader this will be using py pdf loader what is the difference between those unstructured file loader will be able to understand any kind of text files which will which has different formats pdf have a certain format in them which is easy to extract whereas unstructured file folder is just like a mongodb no sql you can have documents you can have elements in there so you don't know what exactly are going to get but pdf loader is something like sql where you know exactly what particular table is there now once i do this i create a document i concatenate them that is merging pdf loader and the other loader what the other loader does is getting a text files creating chunks so i split whatever i get into chunks and send it into the text splitter how exactly does it work let's say you have 1000 to 2000 of text present in a particular document whereas this particular book has 154 pages it will have more than 1000 characters a thousand words so each and every character has to be split and each chunk size should be defined so let's say you have n number of chunks you create chunk size for each and every list element to be represented in the vector and there should be always an overlap why because let's say you are adding a particular data on to the chunk you can if you miss something out you lose the context out of it so i added a particular paragraph from here and i kept it from here till this section because of the character limit now a is the last letter which is present and then in the next section it will be like this so if i don't keep an overlap of let's say 10 on this particular section like i don't keep an overlap for 10 letters or 10 yeah 10 letters or characters then it will lose the context what exactly this was like why this a is present here and it will give you wrong outputs wrong generation that's the reason why you need chunk overlap and chunk size each and every size has an overlap you can keep as per your pdf size okay now we have to add embedding factories what exactly that is like that's a quite big word so it is tra sentence transformer where it will help you to convert your words into vectors 
defining into matrices which we learned just now in the theoretical section once you have it we create a chroma collection out of it how we whatever we got whatever embeddings we got we send it and also the documents we split all the documents then we create it so let's merge all those things here now i extracted the documents i have the documents now i created chunk of them out of them now what i have to do is go in them enumerate its chunks and get print print them once i have that i create embedding factories once i provide embeddings to the chroma collection it will not only create a vector representation of it it will help us in similarity search once this is done your chroma collection is ready you have your database added with all document data you had in the docs folder let's say you want to do a web search you can use this particular file where you can use a recursive url loader how does it work it uses it goes to the url it scrapes all the data you have to provide beautiful soaps lambda function here saying that we are using html parser and converted it convert it into the text find the text out of it we do not want extra information such as title headers all those things those are the tags for html and css for building the website we do not want them we just want the text out of it also we are having a timeout response that is for 1200 seconds and will always check for the response status because we do not want to hang around checking and retrying everything which we have so we'll split each and every document into overlap and create a chunk out of it similarly we did for documents and once we have it we'll populate a database same way they did for documents this is same the difference we have is for extraction extracting website which was different we are using recursive url loader there for documents we are using pdf loader that's the difference here now you can add your websites right here in this list and extract them what exactly this max depth is it uses max depth as 2 because it will only if you go to the home page of a particular website it will only go till the depth of 2 let's say about us about us as vision vision has some other section which is this annual reports so this are being used in now once we have it we do the querying from here because we are going to get all those information so this is how everything works in Rad and i hope you are able to understand at least of it because i know you cannot do hands-on right now but i tried my best to give you an idea how it works so right here if you ask any kind of query and click on send it will be able to answer your queries let's go ahead and try something Soil, plant and nutrition. What kind of soil I should be using for millets? So right here you can see for millets it's a cereal crop and it gave me each and every value such as the pH and water holding capacity and all those things. It also mentioned what kind of soil I have to use for millets. It gave me two types of soil and each has different kind of abilities. So this is how it works. Okay. So 
who all wants to try out this particular assistant i can try asking the questions you want in here ask any questions in this particular chat and i'll answer them also you have to if you have any kind of questions you can ask to me you can ask questions about what if you have any doubts related to this yes sir so as you have given us a brief about your code so uh, since i am also a participant of sih and our team is going to merit and we are making a, working on a sign language model and we have to make an nlp model where we are detecting terms some signs and forming a sentence out of it okay i see yes sir so you can give a guideline how can you work on this since it involve nlp yeah um you can definitely try it out like what exactly your doubt is i was not able to understand it as you mentioned you are working on sign languages and converting them into a text so um do you want yes, a particular platform where you can uh like do the image translation effect or a real time translation how, how are you planning for yes so we are making a real real time translation so uh, are you planning to use any kind of uh, web based architecture or mobile based architecture on this sorry sir can you please pardon yeah so are you planning to use uh, web based architecture or mobile based architecture like where exactly your videos will be recorded and then get back to it uh, how are you going to yes, detect so we are planning a file based architecture okay so as per the guidelines i am completely not sure like uh, your doubt it is quite an open domain for me to answer so is it something specific you would like to get a guideline on yes just since we are working with sign language and we are detect in s in indian sign language okay we are having single words for meaning since hi bye and we have to make a sentence out of this Okay. So how we can work out this? So you want uh, whatever I'm saying like this, and it should be a subtitle to it, like real time streaming line, streamline response, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. So do you have machine at that level that it can give you quickly this response? Because you'll need some kind of machine which will be able to give you a server. Yes, it takes the issue. Yeah, <laughs> because as of now, you can try with the imaging. Like you can click a photo or a video. If yeah, a video would be better because sign language won't work without a video. So, so you record a video and then process it accordingly. Because if you try to do it real time, then it will take a lot of bandwidth on your own machine. if you were using some kind of server such as aws gpu server then it would have helped you a lot in this particular process as it would be quicker you can also try using um yeah there is this model which is free by so i'm sorry on the linux studio i i was checking it it's lava lava 1.5 you might have heard about it you can try using that and check if it is working it is vision model and it will also be able to give you some data you can train it by using your own train data training set and then you can use it for real time input output that will help you because llms are for generations right you can use multi model where this lava will provide you a contextual response on it and then you can get a text response from the text generative model 